Are you ready to invest in yourself today? Welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast, where investment leader Billy Epperhart teaches you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom. Scripture says in Deuteronomy 8.18, Remember the Lord, your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. At Wealth Builders, our goal is to teach you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom in your finances, your business, and your investments. So in getting back to change, on learning to communicate effectively, people don't fear change, they fear loss. And so when you start leading people through change, it's that trust issue that you have to build in the process. And let me just tell you this, nobody really uh, wants to change most of the time because they're not willing, and especially in an organization this size, they're not willing to leave what is familiar. So what happens is people get into a certain rhythm and there are certain things that are familiar. And by the way, being familiar with something is not an automatic negative, right? It's because some, because sometimes familiarity actually will create security in a way that people kind of know what's going to happen, who's around, and that creates a level of trust and security. But in order to move forward, I mean, if you think about, you look back where Andrew Womack Ministries has been and Karis Bible College has been, and you look back at the different places. I looked uh, all the way back. We went all the way back to 2000. 2006 in some of our records, and I think in 06, I stand to be corrected, but if my memory serving me, we are, I think, the entire ministry across the board, Karis, everybody, we brought in in 2006, 11.6 million, if I remember. Does that sound right or was it less than that? It's close, isn't it? And so to go, to go from 11 million to 22 million, there has to be some changes. To go from 22 million to 33 million, there has to be some changes. To go from 33 million to 66 million, there has to be some changes. And so I, I'm not talking about it only in terms of money. I'm just trying to let, use money as an indicator of the growth that we see happen. So make sure that when you're communicating, you say it seven times, seven different ways. Also make sure you understand the perception of people. So let me tell you, let me explain this and then I'll move on quickly. When I say seven times, seven different ways, so the most effective communication is first listening, okay? But then if, if you're introducing something, do not introduce it the first time you talk about it. You go, well, then how do I do it? You have to tell them in a polite, kind way that you're thinking about going this direction. And if you'll do that, you're talking about effective communication, if you'll say, listen, I've been praying, I've been thinking, I've, we've got some challenges, I'm thinking about this. And what you want to do is say it in a way that you get some response so that you locate where people are. So you tell them that you're going to tell them. That's not being sneaky, that's being smart, it's being wise. Just say, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. You know, I'm thinking about... Elizabeth goes, I'm thinking about Billy building you a set for TV, right? Know what you did? I'm thinking about building you a set, Billy. And uh, that goes in my mind. And, uh, and then she says, you know, we're working on your set, Billy. That's the second time she's telling me she's going to tell me. And then she, not, not physically working, just kind of drawing it up, not, not building it. And then when she comes to the point the third or fourth time to tell me, she says it's going to cost $30,000. <laughs> so the first time she told me, I said, I got to think about it. And then Big Andrew comes in the other day. I've only been on that set one time. Some of you have, that are in this room have been on that set 15 times. I've never been on it, but it's still Billy's set. The point is really not, I'm joking. It's, but the point is, when you're talking to people, you have to introduce where you're going. Where pastors and leaders and organizations make major mistakes is they stand up from the pulpit and announce this big mega change. If I was ever going to announce a change to you as an organization, 
a big change that's going to affect everybody and be walloped, the big Andrew and Miss Jamie approved, I would first have small group meetings and tell everybody what's going on. I'd do one-on-ones, and I'd go from one-on-ones to one-on-threes, and then one-on-threes probably to one-on-tens, and I'd go around and let everybody ask questions so that by the time we stood up to announce, and I'm talking about big changes, like major changes, to announce major changes, you everybody in the room would already have heard of it. So in your department, some of you have departments that have over 100 employees. Some of you have departments that may have four or five employees. But the truth of that is you need to learn how to communicate. So I know sometimes that this is not possible when, when edicts come on from high that we need certain levels of performance or something to be done, but it's just something you continue to work on in the small things so you learn to af- effectively communicate with people in a way and always give people a chance to respond. Number four is what I call lacking integrity, and this is a big one. I've been guilty of this one before in my life and my leadership, but I think it's important. I try not to lack integrity, but let me tell you what I mean by this, by this one. This is kind of different, is when questionable decisions for financial gain or personal benefit are are made, employees know. Now, some of you may not be in a position where you could do that personally in your departments, but but the truth of the matter is, People have to know that when you're making decisions, it's about the organization and it's about the team. It's not about you individually. Now here we're talking about financial gain or personal benefit, but some of those personal benefits sometimes are what make you look good. And if you're always concerned about what, you know, let me just tell you this, true, genuine vulnerability in leadership will win people's hearts quicker than anything else. When you go around acting like you're the big deal and I'm the only one that knows anything, I'm not telling you not to be a strong leader and I'm not telling you not to be confident, okay? I'm just saying that there is, there is a level of vulnerability and when you make decisions, it cannot be about you personally. You always have to make decisions for the benefit of the group. And if you do that, then God will pull you up. Is this going over okay? I can't tell. Are y'all doing all right? I see some of you passed out. So. <laughs> and number five is the failure to give ongoing feedback. And so of all the ones I've missed, I think I missed this one the worst. And uh, I think where, where the feedback comes in is both positive feedback that we talked about in number one, but also it's feedback for areas of improvement. And one of the things that I'll just want to encourage you on, because you guys are all leaders here, is that if, if someone is not measuring up in an area, first of all, there's a way to talk to them, but secondly, and HR can help us with that, but secondly, you have to give them feedback in an honest and straightforward measure without it being full of personal criticism. You have to say, I've noticed this has happened Uh, Help me understand today why maybe you're taking this approach or that approach so that I can better understand what's going on. You begin to talk to them like that. Now, I just want to say this as a recognition here. May I? Because I'm in a group of leaders, I think. Am I in a group of leaders? We're good, okay. Who was in in that meeting I, I walked in on today? Colleen, you were in there. Is anybody else in here in that meeting? Mike was in that meeting. So I have a question. Is that all? Is anybody else? So Colleen and Mike. So my question is, uh, and I asked when I walked in the room, is anybody on Zoom? And uh, they said, yeah, right down on the bottom right-hand corner, there's six people. And I said, well, when I leave, make sure you tell those six that are, they're in their pajamas, make sure they get up and get dressed. <laughs> you say, why would you say that? Well, you know, at times... There, you know, at times you got to be a little bit challenging. But I'm not blaming anybody on there. I don't know who it was. I have no idea. But the point of it I'm making is, is that when we talk about the positive things, you have to be willing to give the feedback that's needed. And the longer you wait to give feedback in a way that's positive that helps them improve, the, if it's a serious deal, the more challenging it becomes. 
And so you allow a problem to grow and become something that is really very difficult to deal with. And so you want to be able, now again, I, I said up front, this is an area of all the things I shared, this is the one I have to work on the best, the most. I have to improve myself. And I think when I've observed leaders uh, here, uh, the different ones that I've worked with directly, I think most of those I've worked with directly have been probably better about this than I have. But it's just important that you're able to give people feedback. And then I'm going to end with this on number five. One of the key elements when you're giving feedback is create an environment not only of trust and acceptance and understanding, but also get, create an environment where people can improve, self-improvement. Not just self-improvement to do their job, right? Not just self-improvement to do their job, but self-improvement for them personally. I call that personal growth. Allow, try to create an environment where at least there's some room for personal growth in their own life. And so as I share this with you, that, you know, that's important. So, so this is the last thing I'll say right here, and we're going to change. If you're not growing yourself, you're not reading yourself, you're not listening to things both spiritually and in the areas of leadership that help you grow, it's hard and difficult to lead improvement on your team. And so what happens is you become empty yourself and then it becomes very difficult. And so one of the things that I encourage you in is sometimes you guys can pick a book and read it together and review a chapter. So if you, if you did that for 15 minutes or 30 minutes and had it, it helps people grow in those areas. And sometimes when you're doing that, you can actually deal with difficult issues sometimes that the book talks about or something that's there that doesn't come directly from you. It came from the book and you can discuss it openly without pointing the fingers at anybody or calling anything out. It just happens and you create what I call a personal development environment we hope you learned something of lasting value today from this Wealth Builders podcast. If you'd like any tools, teachings, or resources mentioned in the podcast, you'll find them online at wealthbuilders.org. Wealth Builders exists to teach you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom in your finances, your business, and your investments. Wealth Builders is a nonprofit organization. We depend on your donations to keep this podcast running please consider donating to us on wealthbuilders.org.